Do you suspect you might be experiencing chronic inflammation and it could be accounting for why you're not feeling the best or maybe getting some medical diagnoses? Well, let's talk today about the markers on your blood work that can be used to detect chronic inflammation. And sometimes it's more about the patterns than about the individual markers. Hi, I'm Dr. Patricia Mills, holistic medical doctor with a root cause approach to your health concerns. And welcome to the Wild Wisdom Show. Today, we're gonna to be talking about detecting chronic inflammation on blood work inflammatory markers explained. Just a very quick review. Chronic inflammation is when your immune system is chronically constantly activated and it's not a big activation. Usually it's a low grade activation. I've covered this in previous episodes. We can leave you feeling tired, brain foggy, hard time sleeping properly, maybe some weight gain. Belly fat is a high indicator. Maybe you have a medical condition like hypertension or high cholesterol, obesity, cancer. We want to make sure that we understand whether inflammation is contributing to this so that we can address it with root cause solutions. The good news is that there are six blood markers and be commonly ordered by doctors, so not in the research setting, but just in the clinical setting to reveal inflammation. And sometimes, like I mentioned before, it's more about the pattern. So we're going to be talking about that as well. The first marker is high sensitivity CRP or HSCRP. I really like this one because it is a key inflammation marker. If it is higher than a two milligrams per liter, that is very suspicious for inflammation. And if you get to a three, four or five, six or seven, for example, as that number goes up, the more certain you are that inflammation is there. However, if it's really, really high, like above a 10 or a 20, then you have to think about, was I sick when I was doing my blood work? Maybe I had a viral illness, a cold or bacterial infection, because when we have an acute infection, that HSCRP can rise very high. And if that's the case, you want to have that blood marker repeated in the future, one or two months from the time it was taken, at a time that you're feeling well, you're not feeling sick, to make sure that that marker comes down to below a two and ideally even below a one milligram per liter. Now, one thing you have to understand is that if HSCRP is high, you know there's inflammation going on, but if it's normal, it doesn't mean that inflammation is not there. And we will be talking about this towards the end. The next marker is called ESR or erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Now, HSCRP is a protein that the liver makes when the body is inflamed. So when there's inflammation, the liver responds by making more HSCRP. ESR is when you have more protein on the red blood cells, which causes those red blood cells to clump more together and drop quicker in that blood testing tube. So that's what they're looking for is the rate at which that blood, those red blood cells clump and drop to the bottom of the test tube. And the faster it drops, the more inflammation you have. However, it's a very general marker. It's not as good as HSCRP for detecting that low grade chronic inflammation. It tends to be high in very long standing high grade chronic inflammation. Like if someone has rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, then doctors will use ESR to monitor response to treatment. But it also goes up slightly with age. And so it's not that great for detecting that low-grade chronic inflammation. So if it's high, that's an indication that you have to look further, but you would be wanting to do additional tests like the HSTRP and also looking at the signs and symptoms of inflammation, which we're going to address why that's important as well. The third blood marker is ferritin. Now, ferritin is interesting because it's classically used as a marker for iron storage. Anything below a 35 starts to get suspicious for decreasing iron stores. However, if ferritin goes high, and ferritin, when it goes high, it's because, again, the liver is detecting inflammation in the body and making more ferritin. Things like H HSCRP and ferritin, they're called acute phase reactants because the liver in response to inflammation will start making more of it. And so you can get some interesting patterns where, for example, you can have normal iron stores and really high ferritin. And the difference in levels varies between men and women, which I'll talk about. But you could also have very low iron stores and you would expect to see a low ferritin with that. But if you have normal or low iron stores, like iron levels, for example, 
and you have high ferritin, that is very suspicious for inflammation. And an elevated ferritin has been linked to inflammatory consequences like insulin resistance, which is a risk factor for diabetes, gaining weight, cancer, dementia, strokes, those kinds of things. Now, the levels differ between men and women. Women, anything above a 200 nanograms per milliliter, that starts to get concerning. For men, over 300 nanograms per milliliter. Now, these are values that depend on the country that you're from. So depending on the country that you live in, maybe your lab is not measuring in things like nanograms per milliliter or milligrams per liter in the case of, case of HSCRP, in which case you have to do the conversion for these numbers to mean something to you. I'm not converting everything because it would just be too much. There's people all over the world listening to or watching this. So you do need to do the conversion, but at least this gives you a general sense and what a normal value would be based on these values of nanograms per milliliter for ferritin. Platelets are the fourth sign of inflammation if they are elevated. Platelets are present in the blood. Again, they are made in response to inflammation. And if you have chronic inflammation, if you were to have elevated platelets and then repeat them again in the future, they would stay elevated. That's a very suspicious sign for inflammation going on in the body. Um, and there's this ratio that sometimes can be used where if you have high platelets and low lymphocytes, and lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell, and both platelets and lymphocytes are made in the bone marrow. When you have inflammation, it can affect the whole body, including the bone and the bone marrow. And so one of the ways it can show up, again, is this high platelets, low lymphocytes, or just high platelets. And again, maybe your inflammation isn't affecting the bone marrow and you have normal platelets. It doesn't mean you don't have inflammation. You just don't have the kind that's impacting the bone marrow production of platelets. Now, the fifth blood work that we're going to be looking at is cholesterol and triglycerides. So cholesterol is made in the liver, things like HDL, which is considered the good cholesterol, and LDL, which isn't bad, but if it starts to get too high, that's considered concerning for increasing your risk of stroke and heart attack. Triglycerides is not a cholesterol, it's a fat present in the blood. But when inflammation is present in the body, we start to get an increase in the production of cholesterol in the liver, and there may be difficulties with clearing the fat from the blood, so increase in triglycerides. So a very suspicious sign of inflammation is when your HDL is going down and your LDL is going up and that your triglycerides are going up. And so when I see high cholesterol, unless it's familial hypercholesterolemia, where there's a genetic predisposition to having a hard time clearing cholesterol from the body and a more genetic predisposition to taking up cholesterol, usually, unless it's that case, familial hypercholesterolemia, which you would know if you have a family history of people dying at a very young age from strokes or heart attacks or having very high cholesterol at a young age, even when they're children, it can start. Most people who have high cholesterol, they don't have that. They have high cholesterol from inflammation. And it's not that you're eating foods with high cholesterol. It's that you're eating foods that cause inflammation, or maybe it's toxins, or maybe it's stress. There's many different things that can cause inflammation. And I'll be giving you some resources at the end of this to figure out what it could be for you, which are the one or multiple contributors. But when I see cholesterol in the blood work of my patients, I immediately think inflammation when that cholesterol is high, especially the pattern of low HDL and high LDL. If HDL is high, I'm not concerned. That's a good kind of cholesterol, so that's not concerning. It's more when that HDL drops and the LDL goes up. So that's the pattern that you're looking for. And researchers are looking at ratios like HSCRP divided by HDL. If HSCRP is high and HDL is low, that's more concerning for inflammation because, again, researchers recognize that there is no one blood test that will tell you if a person has inflammation. Sometimes you have to look at a pattern or you're pointing the finger towards inflammation more strongly when you start to see these patterns. The sixth marker that I'm going to address before I talk about patterns that you would see of inflammation on blood work is HOMA-IR or homeostatic 
model assessment of insulin resistance. HOMA IR is basically when you take your fasting blood glucose and your fasting insulin, and then you use a calculation that was developed by researchers at the University of Oxford to give you a risk range. If your value is less than a one, then it's very low risk for having insulin resistance. If it's between a one and a two, it's still low risk, but you're starting to get closer to developing insulin resistance. Over two, you have mild insulin resistance, and over a three is moderate, over four is significant. So when you have insulin resistance, that basically means that for various reasons, again, dietary, toxins, stress, and this has been going on for years, if not decades, before this gets picked up. And this marker of insulin resistance, by the way, will be abnormal before your fasting glucose and your hemoglobin A1C start to become abnormal, which are the classic tests that most, for example, family doctors in Canada can test for. In Canada, only specialists can test for fasting insulin. And so this is something that may not be as accessible. And also the doctor needs to be trained in using that calculation and interpreting it. Functional medicine doctors are trained in this. Some other doctors who have done additional training in this area. Your family doctor will probably not be able to do this unless they've received additional training. So that's just important to understand. But in Canada, for example, as long as a specialist ordered it, it's included under public health insurance. So it's not an added cost. But if your family doctor orders it, it can be an added cost. And that's even if they do order it because they may not feel comfortable ordering it if they don't know what to do with the results. So this is specific to Canada and there's different considerations in other parts of the world. But this is a very strong indicator that inflammation is going on. It's the inflammation related primarily to blood glucose or blood sugar, where the diet is very high in refined carbohydrates, which are flour or sugars, hidden sugars in ultra processed foods. There can be hidden sugars in protein powder and protein bars and granolas and all these things. So if you have a high HOMA IR, you want to really look at your diet first and really look at what could be driving that high glucose in the blood. And then after that, you're looking at toxins and stress and so on, because those can also increase insulin resistance. Now, the patterns to watch for, is, first you need to understand that you could have a couple of these tests positive and then the rest normal. And that can indicate inflammation because every person's body reacts differently to inflammation. Also, inflammation can be in different parts of the body. As I mentioned, something that the liver can detect versus something that the bone marrow can detect. And so depending on how your body has created the inflammation, what parts of the immune system are activated, what parts of your body are inflamed or not inflamed, you're going to get different pictures on blood work, which is why it's important to understand that it's not that you need to have all of the markers being high you can have certain combinations. So for example, if you have HSCRP plus ferritin being high, that's a sign of inflammation and very suspicious for insulin resistance. And if HOMA IR is high, that's also very suspicious for insulin resistance. You can have high platelets and high CRP, and that is indicative of chronic immune activation. So if you keep testing it and keeps being high, that's not like a response to an infection that comes and goes, that's a chronic immune system activation. If you have that low HDL, high triglycerides and high CRP, that's a very metabolic inflammation associated with things like belly fat or visceral adiposity, high blood pressure, which increases risk for stroke and heart attacks. And again, I mentioned the HOMA IR is really important to look at in terms of that blood glucose connection. However, I always tell my patients that blood work is not the full story. You can have inflammation and have normal blood work. And that is something that I think is not well understood, but is very, very key to understand. Because for example, if your brain is inflamed or your ovaries or your joints or your skin, and that inflammation is localized and hasn't spilt over into the blood, you could have normal blood markers. All of these blood markers could be normal. Also in research, they can do more sensitive tests like interleukin-6, and they've shown that you can have people who have normal HSCRP, which is probably our most accurate sensitive test for inflammation, but there are people who have normal HSCRP, but very high interleukin-6, which is a marker of inflammation. So in those people, for whatever reason that we don't quite understand yet, inflammation didn't increase HSCRP, but it increased interleukin-6. So sometimes it's because we can't do all the tests in our clinical practice. 
which is why you have to understand that abs are the whole picture and you absolutely need to understand how inflammation can show up in your body. So what are some signs and symptoms? I highly suggest going into my YouTube channel and using the search bar in my channel at dr.patriciamills to look up the video top 10 signs of inflammation where I go through the most common signs of inflammation. Now, if you have a medical diagnosis like depression, anxiousness, maybe it's hypertension, belly fat, obesity, uh, chances are you do have inflammation. When you look at the research, inflammation is almost always, if not always present. And what we do know is that when we can reduce inflammation, it makes that experience better. It reduces the signs and symptoms. Sometimes it even reverses the condition. Addressing inflammation is so key. So I highly recommend exploring my inflammation playlist also on my YouTube channel. You can look at that playlist tab, search the playlist, look for the one that says inflammation. And I go into the root causes, diet, supplements, and more. So you really want to become informed because knowledge is power and wisdom is knowledge and action. So you deserve to feel good, to feel energetic, have clarity and be balanced. You need to start with understanding your blood work, but you also then need to continue with understanding those root causes and what you can do about them. So if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Patricia Mills MD or at dr.patriciamills. It's the best way to support the Wild Wisdom Show and save this for future reference and share. Sharing is caring and you never know when someone's going to benefit from this wild wisdom, please put any aha moments, thoughts, or questions in the comments below. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, and night, depending on when you catch this. I'll see you next time. Bye now.